So I've just finished writing the book, um, but it's not out till January 2015, and it's going to be published by Paul Grave Macmillan. It's called Neuroscience for Leadership, The Brain Gain. So it's really talking about what is it from neuroscience that applies to leadership and how can that be used by leaders and managers today. And we believe that it's got serious applications for leaders themselves in terms of how they maximise the use of their own brain, stay resilient and get the most out of others, particularly in terms of leveraging diversity of thinking in teams, creating the conditions for success in the environment that those teams exist in, so physically in the organisation, and for innovating into the future. Well, obviously, I'm going to put this book on the reading list of the programme at MIT, which actually has the same name. So the programme is launching in November. It's called Neuroscience for Leadership. I'm co-designing and running it with Professor Deborah Ancona, who is the author of X Teams and one of my favourite Harvard Business Review articles in praise of the incomplete leader. So it is a little bit about saying you don't have to be good at everything or try to be good at everything. It's about focusing on your strengths, finding complementary people to be your right-hand person, fitting yourself into an organisation that values the things that you're good at, using neuroplasticity to change some stuck neural patterns that you may have as a leader, but also really maintaining your integrity and authenticity about who you are as a leader and using that to promote um, getting the best out of other people's brains, inspiring them, motivating them. It's going to be really practical and experiential. They've even allowed me to include a yoga class on the programme, which I think is the first for MIT. And we're not just going to talk to people about neuroscience and how it applies to leadership. We're going to change what they eat and drink over those two days. We're going to include the exercise. I don't think we'll be able to include a nap, but I'll certainly be talking about napping. Um, and we're really hoping that people will, will go out there and do things differently as a result of understanding the physiology, you know, the, real, the tangible stuff behind why you behave how you behave.